is our county. This is a. This is this week's uh, topic video. Today we are talking about buyers. These are the five questions you need to ask your realtor or agent before you go see homes, before you drive out there. So these are the five important questions. I am Stephanie Dupuy with the team at Keller Williams West Sound with Cassandra Lopez Dupuy team Keller Williams West Sound. I'm like safe me, Cassie. <laughs> <laughs> Cassie got me laughing too hard before. We so, <laughs> so, Cassie, we were just talking, you know, we meet with buyers and they just want to get going. They don't know what to do. And it's the broker's job to take control and leave the situation, you know, leave the situation. And really, so what we want to do today is explain to buyers here's how you can set up your bought home buying experience for success simply by asking five really logical questions. Yes. And these are questions that are, um, they're obvious to us, of course, yeah. may not be so obvious to the, the layman buyer. Exactly. Yep. The first question, this is very obvious, but you've got to ask this question if you're a home buyer. Uh, what is the market like? What is the market like? And we want to ask that question, you know, in one sentence or two sentences, why do they need to know what the market's like? Yeah, no, that's a good question no matter what market we're in. Um, but I think it's more appropriate in this seller's market, right? Because the buyers need to know, you know, what their advantages and disadvantages are, what their competition is, what the inventory is. Um, mm -hmm. All these factors are going to play into how they're going to move forward with the purchase. So what is the market like is going to have a myriad of, you know, effects on how they make their decisions with their purchase. Exactly. It's going to affect their purchase is what you're saying from, from the point they begin searching for homes until the point they close. Mm -hmm. So you need to know what the market's like. Second question to ask your broker is, uh, are my budget and expectations realistic? Are they in line with reality? And if they're not in line with reality, where do I need to make compromises? Yep. And are you finding right now, Cassie, that uh, some buyers are needing to make compromises with their budget and expectations? Most assuredly. Um, in fact, buyers are probably going to make more adjustments and more compromises than they originally thought or maybe originally were comfortable with. Um, once they actually have that aha moment of, oh man, this is what the market is requiring of me, in order for me to get a house. Yeah, that's the unfun part of our job. I mean, we, how many times do we meet with a buyer and they're like, ah, I wanna, what's the, the running joke right now? Uh, it smells so smoky around here. Uh, the running joke right now in our business is, uh, hey, anyone have a house for 250 on waterfront for five acres? <laughs> no, because that house doesn't exist. It maybe existed in the 20s, but. <laughs> it existed in 1920s, exactly. Um, yeah. So, if you're a buyer, first thing, you know, come in with, with what your budget is and, and what your, your dreams are, and also outline what your must haves are and your deal breakers. That's where to start, and then work with your agent to look at where you need to compromise and fudge things and adjust for today's market. Leads to question one. Third question is, how well do you know the market that I'm buying in? Why is it so important for the agent, for the broker to know the market that they're buying in? Because we see this all the time. Seattle agents come over, out of area agents are like, oh, I can sell, we're licensed to sell anywhere in the state. That's Just because you can doesn't mean you should. So why is it? And we're not, yeah, and we're not talking about the broad low inventory sellers market. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about areas, neighborhoods, mm -hmm. um, school districts, that sort of thing. So, excuse me, all the smoky air is making my nose, I have allergies. Um, mm -hmm. So the broker you work with should know the neighborhood cold. They should know how many active listings are on the market that day. They should know median price point. They should know average days on market. They should know the common practices that are going on in that area. Um, like for example, right now, it's really common to either do a pass fail only inspection or waive the inspection. Yeah. That's a common trend right now. Not advisable that we waive it, you know, 
but that's what we're seeing. So your broker needs to know what your competition is doing so they can advise you on how to be competitive. Hmm. Exactly, well said. Uh, the next question, the fourth question is, what is your schedule like? And what is the best way to communicate with you? So you wanna ask your broker very clearly, what's your schedule like? And which form of communication do you prefer to communicate via email, text, or phone call? And that way, you're not calling your broker when they need to communicate via text. If the broker's in meetings or showing homes, they're not picking up the phone. It's not that they're ignoring you, it's just it's rude to be working with a client you know, hash those things out prior. So why else is this an important question? I get yeah, this is, passionate about this one. <laughs> this is a, this is more of a logistical question. Mm -hmm. um, so this question, you know, will set the expectation for how your broker is going to communicate with you. So, you know, we're fine with text calls, emails, that's all good. You know, we'll communicate with you how you prefer to be communicated with. Um, but we do set office hours. We do, you know, turn off our phone at night. You know, we're not going to be available 24 seven. We do have lives outside of the state. We have families, we have pets, we have other commitments, right? Just like any other person with a job, right? And so we set that level of expectation for you, um, to say, Hey, I'm not available after 7 PM, you know, these nights of the week or whatever your boundaries are. Um, but it's also to let the client know that there's really no emergencies that need attention 24 hours a day. Real estate only really happens nine to five. You know, escrow title are only open nine to five. Lenders are only open nine to five. So, you know, that's when stuff is handled and managed. There are gonna be the few exceptions, you know, the barn burners, if you will, but for the most part, it can well, probably it wait. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, Basically, the, this question, how to communicate, what hours to communicate within, and which form of communication, text, email, uh, phone call, mm -hmm. is a question then what you're saying, um, so that when you do communicate, you get the response in the time that you want it. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, and then they have, you know, they have the expectation if they have a thought that pops into their head at 10 p.m. at night and they text you, that. They're not okay. gonna get a response till the morning. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, the fifth question is, what is your schedule like for viewing properties? What is the schedule like for viewing properties? Can we go like, boom, right now? Are you a property showing robot or? <laughs> yeah, if you're not available, do you have an assistant or partner mm -hmm. agent who is yeah. able to step in and help when you're not available? Because. I think one of the things we run into in this market is we have to respond quickly right now. But a quality agent's gonna be busy. So right. You need to ask this question. Why is this question important, Cassie? Yeah, quality agent is gonna be busy and they're gonna have their schedule time blocked mm -hmm. to accommodate mm -hmm. their clients and their business. Um, and, but the, you're right, the dichotomy is that this market requires us to just drop it and go see a house because it's gonna be sold in five minutes. So if you do have a team uh, on any level, even just an assistant or a licensed transaction coordinator, somebody who can open a door for you, that's super helpful because if you're in a commitment, you have somebody to back you up. And that's super important in this market, not only for your client to get in the home in a timely manner, but for you to not wear yourself so thin that you start dropping balls here and there because you're just so, you know, worked to the bone and trying to get in all these houses super quick and you're just all over the place and it's just too much. What's the benefit to the client? What's the, the benefit to the client is that they're covered, they get to see the home in a timely manner and, um, you know, decide if that home is going to work for them or not before it's sold. Yeah, so buyer gets fast response, mm -hmm. get to work with a quality agent. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. Very good question to ask because we ask that question and the agent's like, oh, I'm available all the time. It might be an agent that's like, they're not doing any business. It might not be a good person. Got their calendars open. <laughs> yeah, see, they're super busy, but they show all the homes. Well, that math doesn't add up. So, you know, employ your critical thinking skills here, right? 
it's really good if you ask that question and find out they do have a backup plan. They're realistic. You're looking for things. Is that agent realistic? Are they doing other work? Are they, do they plan ahead and do they have a system in place to show you homes and make sure your needs are met? Excellent. Well, those are the five questions if you're a buyer to ask any agent you're considering working with. We hope you found that valuable. If you have questions, please post them below. Share this with your friends and family. Uh, we are Dupuis team. I'm Stephanie Dupuis with Keller Williams. This is Andrew Lopez, Dupuis team, Keller Williams, West Ham. We will see you next week right here. Please subscribe to our Facebook page or our YouTube channel and like our Facebook page. All right, have a wonderful week, everyone. Bye.